RCA CTC 35 XAA radio AM/FM stereo record player combination. Who remembers these? There have been about four videos on these things. Uh, the first video is when I went and picked it up, picked both of them up. And the second video was repairing the AM FM tuner out of this one. And the third video was uh, testing the television part in this. Now, just a brief overview. This one has a good CRT, good flyback, and a crappy cabinet. This one has a broken CRT, melted flyback, and a good cabinet. Now what should really happen is the good parts come out of this one and we build one good one and then ship the other one for a dog bed. Uh, the leg is broken off of this one right here. But I think the way I'm going to go about this, because I don't do stuff conventional. Since this one has a good CRT in it, I can glue this back together. This is no problem. Since this one has a good CRT in it, I think what we should do is fix this one first. So I want to get it out of here. I want to put the AM FM tuner back in it. Because we fixed that. That was a good video. Bad resistors and bad capacitors. And I want to make sure the crossover capacitors for the speakers are good. And then pull the chassis out. And in this video we'll fix the color TV. We'll get the chassis out. We'll put it on a jig. It had a lot of problems. A lot of weird problems. So I'm going to get this out of the truck. We'll start. We'll put the in this video, we'll fix the color TV par portion, get the chassis out onto the bench on a jig, and then we'll put the AM FM radio part back together and get that working. So this should be a good video color television color tube television repair uh, fixing this thing down here, this dusty. And it's a bit mysterious because I got both of these together out of a storage unit. Several other people had tried to get them, to repurpose them, but they were stacked. So the other people weren't strong enough to lift the top one off and lower it down. Well, I, no problem for me. Uh, they're not that heavy, and if you just take your time and manipulate, use the weight to your advantage, it's no problem to move these things. This is also sort of a very common uh, type, this cabinet. So let's get going on this one and put it back together, get the chassis out, and fix the color TV. This is a look at the one with the good CRT and the bad uh, cabinet. And yeah, I think this, this cabinet is going to be destined for the dog bed but anyway I checked out these capacitors here the crossover capacitors and they are testing good so I guess is this part of the crossover too I wonder what that's for All right, the first thing to do is to glue these legs back on which this one's going to be easy because it's a Pretty clean cut, uh, clean break. I think the way to go is just to glue it and put a screw clamp around it until it dries. Well, I ended up using a screw and I'm using this stuff, which this stuff is insane uh, polyurethane glue. It'll, it'll, it'll break in another spot before this breaks. Well, this one, I had to sort of build it up. There was a piece missing. Eh, I don't know. Whatever. It, it, should, it should hold. Well, it looks kind of dead like this, but 
we'll we'll start on it now and get the radio portion working and then the TV portion gonna put this back together I restored the AM FM tuner amp chassis in another video a couple videos is pretty interesting bad resistor network bad capacitors might be worth watching if you missed it uh, we'll get this put back in we'll see how these giant oval woofers sound I will say this this thing does sound nice and both of these had a gazillion hours on them they're both super high hour and I understand why uh, those speakers those big oval speakers they really sound nice that's actually using the music off the direct TV box this is FM and listen to when I go into FM stereo okay I'm gonna go into FM stereo Anyway, let's get into the TV and fix the TV. I made a, a mistake at the beginning of the video. I said CTC35. This is a CTC25XAA. And I'm going to pull it out and we'll get it on the jig and let's start diagnosing it and make this thing work again. This thing's a mess. This thing is a mess. Here's the CRT DAG grounding strip just floating. And then I gotta figure this out because, yeah, what is this? Let me, I might just unbolt that and leave it and cut the wire for the speaker. Let me see what we got going on here. This must be why the one speaker was out of phase. It was reversed here. But the thing is, is all this, all this connects to the power switch so when you turn the power switch on on the TV it disconnects the speakers from the tuner and connects them to the this the chassis well I don't want that because I use the the stereo from the tuner directly into so I want to figure out I want to get rid of this I don't want this all right, I jumpered all this crap together so I could use the audio portion while the chassis out. I imagine I should clean this off to keep the uh, dust, yeah, very, very gently to keep the dust trolls from eating me up. Yeah, I got to do this very carefully pretty bad there that should make all the people that love to watch other people clean things very happy I just hope I didn't damage any of these coils you know, sometimes this stuff is so old and baked and fragile it's hard to uh, it's hard to not damage something so just like what the hell is this In the previous video, these two tubes, I believe, were not getting hot. The heaters weren't getting voltage. This looks like it's the heater supply. So that is one tacky ass repair. So we need to look into that. I'm looking, boy, is this thing baked. Baked, look at how baked it is. But I'm checking the continuity and it's all good. So I don't know why those tubes weren't getting hot and i don't know why they had that bypass before i put this thing on the jig and totally cremate the crt in the jig i want to spend an hour or so going through and just checking kind of known problems on these sets which are all in this area uh, you can see there's all, already been a bunch of bypass stuff i mentioned this one but these gray wires are you look at that solder joint there that is not factory in fact that's horrific wonder what the point of that is i wonder if that's more filament bypass stuff or what that is um there's other things like right here there's a big 
I don't know what's going on there. So I want to go through and I have the factory service manual here for the A A series, which the only difference apparently is the the audio board is different on the X. So these boards are the same. I want to go through this area right here and check all these peaking coils. Check that. Check that. Just check the DC resistance. Check that. And then, uh, yeah, follow along. This one's measuring 15 ohms. That sounds... This one is measuring about 17, 18 ohms. This one is measuring 18 ohms. This is supposed to be 3.9. It's measuring 4.2. 3.9. It's measuring 4.1. These two are, those two I just checked, are the ones that get cremated when these uh, zero one capacitors get leaky. This is supposed to be a 27K, that's our 732. Uh, and it's measuring 22, so that one's gone down a bit. Look at this, someone put a note here. 0.01 shorted R726 burns blue screen no green or red yeah that's that's those ones I was just showing the 3.9s this one's down a little bit another one this one should be 27 too it's measuring 24 that one's supposed to be 47k it's right on this is checking that jumper right there it's good. So this gray wire that's soldered onto that jumper is this jumper here, which comes over and connects to the center tap of that filament. So all of these jumpers on top here are filament redundancy. Why? And I'm pretty sure we didn't have filaments on these two. Okay, the next step I think is to power it up. Uh, just sitting here and see what's going on with these filaments. I'm going to pull this out to do the testing because... And we're actually going to go to a Russian tube for testing because these 6JE6s are getting very expensive and hard to get even though this is a... Probably a crappany, crappany, japanese -any. tube. This is not a good tube. Not a good quality. I'm going to do this on a dim bulb. That's 60 watts. Well, we got good filament voltage here. And you can see when I... This, this is filament plus and this is ground. When I touch that there, see that? We got a good ground on these. I just deleted this. I'm gonna hit bypass here and we'll see if we see these glowing. I certainly do. I certainly do see these glowing. So it's time to get this on the jig. I can't find anything wrong with it. And if you saw the previous video, it was absolute trash. I mean, it was it was just blowing the CRT out. It would it would overdrive the CRT to where um, you couldn't control it. It would just pull the high voltage down, and then the flyback started to burn and. I think it burned up the high voltage rectifier tube. It was a mess. This looks good. And the filament still looks like it's intact inside there. Of course you aren't going to focus. But it looks like it's in there and it's got a good getter on it. The next step is to get it on the jig without the CRT plugged in. Just so we can watch the high voltage. And then use this to measure the voltages and make sure we have control of these voltages via the screens and drives and stuff. We don't want 
you know, if there's a problem, there's a problem with like the video, video or something that's overdriving the tube, we want to make sure that we catch that before we hook it up to a good CRT. This is also the set that somebody bypassed that focus rectifier with this selenium stick. Instead of the 6DW4 that was in here, I'm going to use a 6CM3. It's a double damper diode. It has about 60% more current capacity than the 6DW4. So we'll use this. And for the horizontal output, I'm going to use a 6P45 Soviet tube. And this is about double the capacity of the, uh, blanking out on it now, the uh, 6JE6. So I, you have to make an adapter to use these, but these are incredibly heavy duty. We're hooked up to the jig here with the shorted red gun. And I'm going to hit bypass here on the light bulb. And let's see what happens. I'm not going to watch cathode or plate current. Ooh, there's our double damper diode. Look at that. Well, we got some audio here. Let's see if we get any high voltage. These Soviet horizontal output tubes have a long, long warm. Is it even getting hot? I don't think it is. Yeah, there it goes. I just had to move it around in there. They have a long warm-up time. They really warm up slow. But they're a beast of a tube. I mean, just look at that towering thing. Okay, here we go. Oh, by the way, I do not have... Oh, what happened there? Oh, there it goes. Okay. I do not have this hooked up. All I'm using the jig for is the yoke substitution and the high voltage gauge right now. In the first video, the last video, that is hot as hell. That is hot as hell. It's getting hot. It's, that's hot. These two were not hot last time. Usually these will burn your fingers. All right, DC voltage checks time. We're going to start with this one. And that's V707. So we should have 95 minus 94. So we should have 95 90, minus 94. We have 121 minus 81. something this is where an analog meter comes in it's like was it trying to auto range or what what we got some ac here 2.5 so a little bit off but not horrible at least it's working this is what the phone is for take a picture of it and blow it up so we should have Six, seven, and eight, we should have 120 plus five and plus eight. So 190. This should be plus five, and it's way off. And eight. That's interesting. I don't know what's going on there. Huh. The voltages are never really right on. So let's go and do this one. 130. Uh, it doesn't tell you an 8. Let's see. This should be 130. What is up with this damn meter? OK, 
Okay, this should be 130. Oh, really? Is that one? That's way off. 130 something and eight. Okay, well. What's going on here? Are these bad tube sockets? Is that what this is? Look at this. I moved the. I moved the tube around in the tube socket. Look at this. Way off. Both of these tube sockets are real flaky. So the next, but the voltages are not way off. They're not like horribly like this one was before I moved the tube. So I'm going to go through and check. Uh, the screens and make sure they're adjustable here. So I want to check um, uh, screens are pins. Five, four, and thirteen. This should be red. Looks like that's working. This should be green. And none of these other ones, none of these should affect the other one. Okay. This should be blue. Okay, so those all look like they're working right. This should be blue drive or, I don't know, let's see. This is blue drive and red green drive. Okay, those are having no effect. How about the bias? Okay, that's having an effect. Okay, here's a problem here. All the cathodes are measuring 0.9. And that's way too low. That's way too low. That would just turn the thing on 100%. So what? what is going on here? Where is our... That's our normal service switch. What is this for here? Video peaking. What is this? This is interesting. This looks like it, it lets you flip the this to control either the red or the green drive. But why is this voltage so low? I think this voltage should be up around 100 and something volts. This is way too low. It looks like that voltage comes from the video amp plate, which was, of course, where the black and white signal is. Uh, through all these combination of switches, and there's supposed to be 350 volts on pin 7 of this, which is the plate. So let's see, 9, 8, 7. And there's 1 volt. Well, that would definitely explain why there's no voltage on the cathodes here. And when the cathodes go low voltage, the brightness goes high. So let me double check this. Now let's see, it's always possible to make a mistake, especially when you're shooting video because you're not, you're concentrating on two things at once. But so it's hot, but it's not like burning hot. So let's see, eight. So nine, eight. That's 71 volts, which it should be 230, which would make sense because if there's no voltage on the plate, it's going to pull all the current through the screen. So 987, yeah, there's nothing there. So let's check this, this 
thing right here. This should be that resistor right there. We have 70 volts on that side. Let's see what we have on this side. See how much is dropping across that thing. 250 volts. So yeah, it's pulling all the current through there because there's nothing on the plate. But why is there nothing on the plate? Okay, where does this come from? Oh, geez. All right, I gotta. Okay, and that comes to here. So it's getting that. Boy, is this a Clark Tarkle Flarfle Blarsher. So we have 405 volts here. You have to follow this. So it comes down here, comes through this coil, comes through this resistor, comes through this coil, comes through this resistor back to the plate. You see that? Should I do that again? Uh, it took me... 10 minutes of looking at it to figure it out. I think the SAMs would be a lot better for this. 405 volt supply coming in here, coming down here, through this coil, through this resistor, through this coil, through this resistor, to the plate. This goes, this point right here goes to the plate where we don't have any voltage here. So it could be. A lot of could be's. It could be this coil, this coil, this resistor, or that resistor, and I believe all this stuff is underneath here because I believe the boards are within these dotted lines. So I'm going to have to tip it up on in and we're going to have to find out where that voltage is getting lost. So this must be those resistors and this must be that double coil and that double coil just looks baked which you know is what I'm afraid of that's some type of peaking coil video peaking coil and that thing just looks baked baked I thought these books usually had a blueprint of the bottom of the board but this doesn't the bottom of the chassis all right, let's check the voltage on both sides of this 5.6K, which is this one, 5.6. Can you see that? I want to verify that, 5.6K. So we've got 900 millivolts there. We've got 900 millivolts there. Now that comes through this coil, which, yeah... So that connects to this coil, and then this coil connects to, there you go, 400 volts. So the frickin' coil is open. Is it permitted to drop an F-bomb right now? Because I, yeah. You know, this is my experience with these things, you know. Uh, it's never capacitors. I mean, sometimes, but... Usually it's something like that, that just, you're just like, okay, where do I get this thing from? Where, yeah. So this is some kind of weird video peaking coil. T106, it's a transformer, but it's some, because yeah, the plate... This is the plate of the video output. So it, it connects to this, and then this thing feeds it over to the cathodes of the CRT. Yeah, we can bypass this, and we'll probably do that just to get it working. But, yeah, you kind of need that for it to have a good picture. And that's exactly what it is. Transformer video peaking. Just a quick recap kind of from the previous video. The problem with this thing was, the symptom was, I had no control over the brightness of the CRT. It would just, you could turn all these controls and it wouldn't affect it. And um, yeah, no control and it was just kind of floating wild. So that's why I decided to verify 
all the voltages here before connecting this to the jig CRT. And we found that the cathode voltage was low because there's no voltage getting to the plate of the video output tube because there's an open peaking coil. And a low cathode voltage will equal a, a driven full-on bright screen, CRT screen. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that peaking coil. Yes, I can bypass it and... We can watch TV, but it's never going to work right. It'll be a soft, blurry, crappy picture or something. And video peaking coils are kind of special. You can't just find an equal inductance coil and put it in there. They're, I, I've never figured that out, but video peaking coils are different. You have to get a video peaking coil. Well, I'm looking at the SAMs. Uh, schematic which is much easier to understand and follow for me than the factory service manual so this this line right here goes over to your plate of your video output tube right this is where we had 900 millivolts so it comes over here resistor capacitor just ignore this, the normal service switch, because that's in normal mode. So basically, your video, black and white, is coming through here. And it comes through here. This is going, the voltage, the B plus voltage is going that way, towards the tube. The video signal is coming this way. It comes through here. This is the coil that's open right here. So here's your 405 volts, and that's why this is not getting to the plate. But that, that um, then comes over here to your drives and then to your cathodes. And you're supposed to have 275 volts on your cathodes. Remember, they were 1 volt. I was saying that's way too low. So... Um, and also, they, they float the filaments up at about 150 volts or something. That way, there's not a huge potential that will cause a cathode to heat or short, which has happened in this jig. Um, so, we, we, can't, we can't just bypass this, because if we bypass this, we're going to just pull the video right off. We'll pull the black and white video right off to the power supply. So you can't just bypass this. Um, this thing almost has to be replaced. Now, could it be fixed? That's possible. But the first thing I want to do is I want to put a milliamp meter across here, and I want to see what kind of current draw we're getting. I'm just curious. I, I think they have it designed so that these resistors will fail before the coil fails. At least I would hope that's how they have it designed. But yeah, let's put a milliamp meter there and see what kind of current draw we're getting on this circuit. You know, even if even if the uh, the plate of the video out was shorted, we would still have almost what ten thousand ohms to ground. But I'm curious, and we have the tools. Let's do it. Here we have milliamps. Here we have plate voltage. Uh, bypass. Let's see. I mean, who knows? It could be carbon tracking or something. Okay, we have uh, 10 milliamps and we have uh, so that's starting to warm up the video output tube and that's starting to climb. So we have 33 milliamps 212 volts on the plate. That's okay. That's good. If there was something wrong, the plate would be low. And 34 milliamps. So that that looks that looks okay. Well, this is kind of interesting. With that connected, the high voltage comes down. If I open that back up. And I don't know if I can explain that. Because 
the CRT is not connected. Well, a little tweak of the high voltage regulation brings that up. Wow, that is interesting. Why, when that's open, it must be something to do with the blanking pulse. There is a line here when it's in normal that goes down to the high voltage regulation. Let me follow that. Yeah, that comes down to this 12 meg that connects to the grid of the high voltage shunt regulator. These things are so damn intertwined. So what does that do? Does that lower the high voltage when you put it into normal mode from service? That certainly looks like what it is. Because if I go to service, that's raster, that's service, that's raster, and that's normal. Very, very weird. So it would make sense that they would, they would want to lower... I don't get it. It's above my head. They They're doing something to lower. I don't know what they're doing. They limit 340 micro henry. Dual peaking. So we need something pretty high. All right, this thing is a double 340. I found a 450 yellow green that's brown the yellow green brown is 450 I also found a 180 brown gray brown so this is a 180 but this is a double like these two are kind of Maybe coupling the signal together somehow like a transformer? I don't know. You know, I might be able to take this thing apart and find where it's broken. But for now, I'm going to just parallel this in there. Just so we can see how the set works. You know, it, the video might not be sharp. But at least we'll be able to see if uh, the color works and the tuner works. And, you know, what works. And then I can work on doing something with this. We just need something to decouple the, the video off between the power supply and the plate. Alright, I just paralleled the 450 in there. Now our cathodes are measuring uh, 280 volts, which is good. So I think we can hook up uh, the crt part and take a look and see what's happening all right here we go crt is connected um tubes are warming up let's see what happens I love high fructose corn syrup. High voltage is coming up. Let's put it in uh, service mode here. And we'll do our screens. Okay, there we go. Red. Green. Oh, we can control it now. Blue. All right. Oh, wow. Now, the drive line here is because I'm using the Russian tube. So let's see where... Okay, that's brightness. That must be horizontal. Jeez, look at the way that adjusts that. Jeez. This, this is very 
Dr. Ooh, Burbobo Mladodashler. Okay, which one is brightness? This must be brightness. Okay, that's vertical. Must be time to get the generator. Got the generator on it. Let's see if we can get a picture here. Okay, where was vertical? Okay, that's brightness. There we go. Oh, look at that. Clarkos. Yeah, look at the look at the horizontal deflection. It's all crunched up in the middle. Okay. So that's brightness. That picture doesn't look half bad. Let me see if I can adjust the focus. Yeah, that's not too bad. I don't know what that is. That's contrast. Okay, let's, that's tone. Let's try and do color here. Holy crap, the color works. Okay, but which, how do you adjust the color? Stand by, let me figure out, I need to figure out what pot here is for what. For one thing, it looks like these two are touching. Okay, so that helped immensely, so this is color level. This is color level and this is tint. And man, the tint range is all jacked up. In fact, it looks like one or two colors might be missing there. Green is missing, maybe? If I just move this tube around. Well, let's see, I flipped, I flipped these two tubes and it made no difference and I flipped these two and it made a difference. Now I got purple and red. You can't even tell that's purple in the camera. Or Magnelia or Magneta or Magneto or whatever the heck, Magenta, that's it. I've got Magenta and red now, but I can't get well, there's light blue. That's almost it. Except green is like yellow. So I'm I'm okay with this, except light blue, green, and yellow really suck. Yeah, well, I don't know if this is accurate, but look at it with the vector scope. Red is completely missing. I don't even know what to think of that. That's tint. I want to get the VG91 and see what this looks like. I can't believe it's that bad.
Well, this is interesting. Using the VG91 on multi-burst, that looks okay. Uh, we might have a little bit of an IF alignment problem that's a little bit limited here. Um, this looks decent. So, it's probably not a bandpass issue, but this... So, this is the EIA. This is what I was talking about, but it doesn't look quite right. You know, the green, the green and light blue, or whatever. Right, we were looking at that. But you go to color bars, there's no red and no green. Uh, and that's about what we got here. So we have got a demodulation problem in this area. It could be one of those 0 .01 capacitors. I better check those. Okay, these are the wrong tubes, and they might be a substitute, but these are supposed to be 6HZ6s. And one of these might very well be bad. And we can tell right away that that did not fix it. And this is why I'm using this, because that way I don't have to count on a, you know, a weird CRT. I'm going to try changing these two now. Alright, I believe I found the problem sort of accidentally. Uh, this resistor, a bad solder joint. Watch when I push on that. And look at the screen. Is it bad? Yeah, you can see it's loose. Yeah. Okay. Boy. Sure a bunch of do about de tervoval doivler. How I found this was I was checking pin 1 here, which should be 175 volts, and it was only 80. So then I followed it. You can see right here it comes over this resistor, and I started probing here. And I noticed it flashing on the screen. So anyway, let's let's fix it. You can see there what's broken. That's just terrible. Look at that. That's just terrible. Come on, RCA. Well, although it's not perfect, an RCA should be really damn good. That is really damn good. Now what I probably need to do now it's red because yeah it's all red because now we got that's green that's red okay yeah that's a lot better oh yeah Oh, what a difference. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yes. What a difference a little cigarette crust makes. All right. Now we can rototwebulate. Oh, baby. Wow, now we're going to be able to do crepe race in style. Let's see. Oh yeah, what a difference there. See, now we have our green. See the difference? The, the, the light blue is still kind of crappy, but that could be the tubes too. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Look at what that looks like. Let's see what the burst looks like now. See what the burst looks like on here. So yeah, see the burst looks pretty good. If the if the chroma band passes off, one of these will not be showing. So this could be better. I adjust the fine tuning here. Yeah, the IF alignment is probably a little bit off. Because we should see definition here on this. 
But yeah. Definitely, we are happy now. And how's the video going to be with... Uh, needs a little vertical work there, doesn't it? How's the video going to be with the... Um, that coil I put in there? I know you can't really see that, but... The camera's making the green look... The green is not the best, but it's pretty damn good. That is pretty damn impressive. So do I just leave that coil in there? Get the converter box and we'll watch some TV. But yeah, it looks, looks good here. A lot better. I'm sure these tubes would improve it, a better balance of those tubes. So on the horizontal output cathode current adjustment, here's a tip for those of you who work on color TVs. First of all, you got to fix crap like this, okay, because this is a no-no. So I'm going to use some non-acidic silicone, I like call those ultra gray. Now to adjust this coil, you don't need a cathode meter or a plate meter. What you do is you just come right down here. See, see right down there? That's the screen on RCA. And you just get on the screen. And we have 142 volts. And all you do is you adjust this for the minimum screen voltage. It was about there. So minimum screen voltage will be minimum cathode current. So in order to do this, everything has to be connected right. So I'll reminimize, you know, I'll, I'll dip the grid. Again, once the silicone dries and when I get it back in the cabinet with the, the factory yoke and convergence, because I doubt this is tuned exactly the same as this factory yoke. Continuing with great fun today at HSN, and we have Linda Lydate that's joining us. Linda, I'm getting you out here early. Yes. And One thing I notice is and I don't know if this is because of the coil, but if I turn the brightness up. Yep, and app to fix your oven. That's correct. You ready to find a pro to help fix it? Yeah. So. You good? Yeah. I mean, that's the contrast all the way up, and it's like it has lack of video. Wow, we have Newsmax over the air? Really? Isn't that like... Newsmax. Look at this. 8-7. Interesting. This is Newsmax. Interesting. Really? OAN is also over the air? Oh, I'm triggering a lot of people right now. Microsoft launches a, a tool to moderate content. Really? OAN and Newsmax are over the air? I don't really watch any of this stuff, but I'm surprised. So I turned the AGC up a little bit. Right. And now look at how crystal clear this is. It's going to take the air in your home and it's going to clean that air in that bedroom, that living room. That yeah, it helped. Room. I turned the AGC up a little bit that gave it more contrast. Asthma or allergy, not cure treatment, and it's going to clean that air, removing all of those airborne um, particulates that are in the air. We're talking things like 
hairspray. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fragrances. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'm glad you brought that up. VOCs, the volatile organic compounds, that... Oh, I love my VOCs. No longer the, oh, it blinked and now it's back on. It's, oh, we're not going to get to you tomorrow. So I love that this really is going to be a saving grace. But I have some questions. Well, yeah, forgive me if you answer them. I had a lot of clothes to clean up, so I was cleaning up. Well, number one. How heavy is this? Could I pick it up? It's 50 pounds. Okay, I can yes. pick up 50 pounds. Yes, or two cool. handles, maybe, you know. Ooh, you know, EcoFlow. Oh, okay. much for you two people could do it. That's kind of a good thing, though. This sucker yeah. is not a cheap, not little, moving. lightweight, little This is a home stuff. generator. It's a home generator. Okay, yeah. it's okay. quiet, and not the neighbors That's are going to bang on my door. That's a great question. A lot it's of homeowners right associations now. don't allow generators. So yeah. this really for sure. Come on here. Okay, it's working pretty good. And I know this is not the best camera, but but here's the cool part right here. This is just under 10 pounds. It has a handle. I can carry it. I was airbnb during, you know, the shutdown, right? I wanted to make sure that... This transformer is buzzing, too. Listen to this thing. But there it is, fixed. And, and the video looks good. I think that coil is going to be okay. And three is high. This is my sleeping mode right here. I just want you to hear it. And I said, I'm going to sleep right here. I think it's almost soothing. <laughs> very soothing. Very soothing. Yeah. And really, and really quiet, which is nice because so many people do yeah. have sensitivity to light right. and oh. sound. And feel this. Occasionally it does that flash and thing, and I'm not quite sure yeah. what that is. Oh, yes. I always keep this on. This is your UVC VOC button. You'll notice when I put this on that this light here will go on. Now, let me just put this on. See this? That is telling me the UVC bulb is on. Now, yes, it's things. filling I'm your bedroom with uh, ozone, and your brain's going to die. Right here. I press that. It keeps the UVC bulb on, but it takes that light off, right? And I can just put it back. Oh, this is going to have a great picture. Yeah, this is going to have a great picture. The greens are good. I don't understand why the camera is making them look like crap. But you look at it, it's sharp. Like... Well, that technological having AI that's a true threat is something that's in a, in a, in a future that's very. Or perhaps just all one giant die off, and we don't know what's actually happening. It's crazy to think about. Uh, what do you realistically think? I know it's just a total prediction, but what do you think? Like totally psyop. up. It's like a total psyop, like, you know? Maybe if you want to be taken seriously, don't hire Frank Zappa's daughter. Oh yeah, I'm happy. It's fixed. There is some ringing. You can see it here. How there's a shadow. You can largely get rid of that by getting rid of the video peaking. The video peaking. But that, I don't know if that's the coil or just the lead length on the jig. Interesting. So it's back to this crap where these two tubes are not getting filament voltage. Oh, now they are. The hell? What is wrong with this? 
Okay, so this this grounding stake is bad, and it's what's causing it to flare out. What I have is I have this connected uh, to the inside of the grounding stake, and then I have my meter connected to ground. Look at this, and watch, I'm going to flex the chassis. Watch what happens here. See this? See how I get that? Watch this. So that's why the filaments are... That's why we got this hum, this very slight hum bar, and yeah, so this needs to be fixed also. I'm just going to bypass that. I'll just solder a piece of wire right to here and run it to there. Okay, I added a big ass thick redundant ground here, and I also resoldered that stake right there. That's the one that was... That's the one that solely grounds these two tubes. Stupid design. Alright. And I thought it was like a horror movie. With his intentions unknown, people are terrified. We really can't do beyond call the police. Even let him keep there. Yell at him. Keep him at your house after you call the police. So they have yeah, it's rock guy. solid now. No hum bars. Look at how good that looks. A hammer? Come on, rock the second, girl. Yeah, we got zero volts there now between... So that was a problem from the very beginning. That, that, and I don't know why it fixed itself. Maybe because I had the chassis tweaked slightly different. But it was doing that in the last video where these two tubes were not getting hot. And it had to be that ground. But it started working. Well, now, it, now it's not going to never not work. Well, there it is. Back in its natural habitat and you can see the focus is way off from the because i focused it to the jig and the convergence is way off but it's all working so problem with these things is a mirror or something in order to in order to see the front of it it's real hard to give these a reach around so i've gotten to the point where i just use the um uh, direct TV to uh, the what do you call it the guide on direct TV to align the convergence you know you can get your center convergence pretty good like this well I'm trying to get this you can see it's it's neat it gets real small at the bottom so trying to get the vertical linearity adjusted without a generator is pretty difficult and there's no big bear. I got it pretty good. Don't wait. Get a plan from HomeServe before a line breaks. Go online now. Plan there is... It's, just it's not perfect. And that's probably because I got the wrong video peaking coil in there. But just for sticking some random video peaking coil in there, I mean, it's working. See how there's this white kind of... Getting treats? That's investing. Start investing with just your spare change. Poshmark is the perfect side hustle. There's so much. I oh, yes. I love my, my IRS. The IRS loves my side hustle. I can list in 60 seconds or less. The IRS really loves my side hustle. And it's pretty good. It's usable. Yeah, there's this weird, see this white, like, drop shadow behind everything? That's not right. But again, you can't see the, see, it's like a drop shadow there. See that? I mean, it's not horrible. It doesn't make it horrible to watch or anything, but it's just not right. And it's most likely that video peaking coil.
ですか This is the Ramones. Kind of funny, the punk ska stuff is starting to come back in. I just wish the anti establishment attitude that it was about would come back in instead of compliance, compliance, compliance. I do what my government tells me. So I'm using. As a source here, I'm using DirecTV and I'm using the audio out into the audio amp in this. I'm not using the audio from the TV. That's why it sounds good. That's why it sounds hi fi and it's in stereo left and right. You can hear it. It's pretty nice. Wait. Ah, 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 we have a domestic terrorist. Well, it looks like I got the linearity in that adjusted pretty good. It's pretty close, like pretty good circle. I notice the convergence keeps shifting around. I hope it's not a bad CRT. This is a problem that can exist within the structure of the guns where they thermally shift. This will be like the third or fourth time that I've adjusted it. Makes a big difference to have that convergence dialed in. I made this to bypass the convergence. It's just like the same thing for the jig. It's 150 ohm between one and two. So when you do that, it really throws the convergence off, but it gets all those diodes and stuff out of the circuit, which could be bad. Um, I might not do this right now. That really throws it off bad. Really cool. A big honor for the champion UCLA women's soccer. and. You know, so when you're watching music videos, you don't see that video peaking issue. But as soon as you see a lot of text, it's, it's all over. You, I really need to get that right transformer. Take the bass line out. Look at the color in this. Wow. And then there's this ridiculous clown show right here. So much. I bet this television has been asleep since the late 70s or early 80s, and it wakes up to this. Secretary of State Clinton's misuse of her email server and how no one's above the law. Yeah, if you look at this, the white shadow off to the right. Right, so that has like, got to be that and peaking coil. And, you know, like echo, you know, van, van and I think I can wrap America this video up, but I'm going to try and America find the right peaking hands. coil for this. You know, if it wasn't for Donald Trump, that would be me in that car getting locked up, right? So um, it's amazing how 50% of our country can see, you know, uh, one uh, the same the same images, the same fact pattern, and view it so differently than the other 50%. Right? This imagery is so You got that right. First of all, look at the imagery of everything stopping. While he is on his way to court, if you are a Republican nominee or candidate and hopeful, you're watching everything stop to address what's happening with the presumptive head of the GOP and front letter. You're also seeing taxpayer resources. Uh, let us see what the controlled opposition to a has to say. Uh, there are no cameras that are allowed in this building. No way, no how. So that is not going to happen. Uh, sitting down with us is a fellow who knows uh, Miami very, very well. In fact, you and I spent some time together uh, in Miami in 2016 during your campaign. Senator Marco Rubio of Florida is, uh, is here with us in the studio. How are you struck by what we're seeing play out again on the screens here? I think it's incredibly damaging to the country. Um, the whole, I can tell you for certain what the damage to the country already is with this indictment. Um, it's going to cause it, the judge is now being attacked. Exxon judge. The kind of people we want on the bench, she's going to be attacked. This is really 
Correct. The, the, the institutions of, of our important institutions. Like it's a media Navy, circus. Yeah, like. It's a commercial the, the, free. Let's see if it's on the local channels. In Biden's garage. They don't belong in. Nope. Remember, again, all of that routine processing will take place behind closed doors. So it's on NBC. It will be looking for a lead. It's on KTLA. With federal law. Uh, this is it's on ABC. These are our local channels. So 37 of them aimed directly at the former president, Walt Nauta. Hit number of cars there. And the it's on KCAL, which is CBS number two. Make their way. We, of course, know the former president is in one of those black SUVs. Of course, they have a number of them. Talk about the carbon security. footprint. Yeah. Roll it out, baby. On a day like this, when uh, a lot of supporters have been invited to the courthouse, as well as... Judge Aline Canyon. It's and on 11, which is our local Fox. Supposed to be overseeing this case, the preliminary. Gee, I would have guessed Kurds and Way. If there's going to be a request to change. What a what a ridiculous waste. Again, we're kind of president right now that will be happening this afternoon. Okay, as you see on your screen there, in, on the left-hand side, you see the crowd, uh, the media, uh, everyone who... You know, one thing these people don't understand is the Streisand effect. The right side of your screen, Sometimes you should just leave something alone and just... So it just kind of dies out and goes away. They just keep pumping this up and pumping this up, and they just are like relentless. And I think it's actually probably going the other way. They're pushing, they're pushing the public view of this the other way. In this case, the foreign president did not turn in the documents which were requested, and so therefore we find ourselves in the. In this position today. As Where's my president. greens at? My greens kind of suck. Yeah, look at the look at the white shadow there. The former president Donald Trump makes his way to the courthouse now, and um, like almost every station is commercial free with this right now. Crowd that is gathered there again. The police chief saying that they were prepared, whether it was five thousand support because basically. And right now they have somebody took some documents from work uh, and there opposing those supporters but the other side doesn't like it and wants no to create this, to this point with the crowd whatever I, sh I should shut up courthouse but you're watching as that uh, motorcade makes its way traffic on the other side of the freeway uh, going smoothly there it seems at this point that there have been no problems at all with uh, this endeavor to get the former president to the court. Oh, house. just keep talking, honey. Today, just keep running that mouth and saying absolutely to nothing. To begin uh, this historic. You know, I think it requires some kind uh, of gift. Not that I'm not doing it right now, but just to watch some cars going down a highway and just keep talking about it in an endless loop. Will actually be fingerprinted. He will also have his picture taken for that mug shot. Uh, uh, they do not do fingerprints and ink any longer. This is a digital fingerprint, so he will not have ink on his finger, but he will have his fingerprints taken, and he will also have a mug shot taken. But again, he is expected to plead not guilty for this. Uh... But not only the country's been able to study, but certainly Donald Trump and his legal... Oh, look, at it's preempted the view. This move more quickly, but that is... Uh, again, a Not that they couldn't have planned that any better. How, how we'll watch this unfold. And exactly what special counsel Jack Smith seemed to want when he made his public remarks, he urged the American public to read all 49 pages and, and decide for themselves the weight of the criminal charges that, that former President Trump is facing. You're right, David, because he does not have to go through some of the usual steps that one might do in an initial appearance, uh, it's not expected that he's actually going to be inside this courthouse terribly long. And once he's through this initial appearance with a federal magistrate, his case is going to shift to a judge that he appointed. Judge Aileen Cannon has been randomly assigned the case. She caused some controversy earlier in the investigation after the FBI raided the former president's Palm Beach estate. She inserted herself and inserted a special master, a third party 
to potentially limit what the FBI Yes, let's watch cars drive down a highway. Version of events, and I want to say that unlike state prosecutions, it is believed that government prosecutions are much tighter, much stronger, because they've already done all the legwork. So Low hanging fruit for the defense, that they? Well, those very documents that are his attorney's notes, that's the part that's most vulnerable because normally that would be covered by attorney client privilege. Normally. Closed captioning, paperwork in part by the following. Missile. They were actually able to pierce that privilege. It's on every channel except two. So because they were able to pierce Let's see about MSNBC. The defense attorney will get another. I think. Between the presidential. Um, wow, it's even on Fox Business. How about CNBC? Here, here we go. MS CNBC. Can find a way to reimburse patients who need this drug. For no, the not on CNBC. How about MSNBC? Let's see. Newsmax. So you're, you're finding the divide that's happening within the Republican Party. Uh, but I mean, the other day, was saying, so, you know, Waiting. Well, it's not on MTV Classics. That's a good thing. Just like hours of commercial free on probably 20 stations. I mean, really? Like, is it? Y'all need to learn about the Streisand effect if you don't like him. Because all you're doing is just making him a martyr, making him more popular. previous existing photo of him to put into the file. Let's bring back our senior legal correspondent, Laura Oh, yes, our, se our senior legal correspondent.